Good evening. Before I begin, I want to reiterate some thank yous. I'd like to thank the teachers, the faculty, the school department, my father, my mother, my family for being here, and the friends who have accompanied me on this journey. We commemorate today not a, a victory or certificate of achievement, but rather a celebration of 13 years of hard work. Hard work which has changed in its definition over time. Many years ago in our elementary school days, hard work used to be coloring inside the lines. And now I'm happy to report, more than 13 years later, many of us still find that hard work. However, if you would like, we can recite a few of the periodic table in order tonight. Now, for full disclosure, when I realized I had to write this speech, I was discouraged. I was worried about leaving high school, and I felt that writing the speech was virtually impossible. It's all been done before. It's, it's all been said. And then I realized, and I came to the realization that the act of crafting and delivering this speech truly captured the idea of finality. That this speech would be my last act as a student, a member of the Bangor School Department. Like many do, the whole new revelation of a new life came to me all of a sudden. And the most prevalent thought in my mind was, who is going to feed me? But more importantly, you feel the same way. But more importantly, I continue to search for a deeper message. And Bob Dylan, through his song, The Times They Are Changing, provided the message, the answer, change. For our generation especially, changes are coming from all fronts, in all different directions. It's difficult to imagine, but needs to be imagined, that the people who you sit with today, the fellow students who are to the left of you and to the right of you, your peers who are ahead of you and behind you, will never play as large a role in your life, in your future, as they have in the past. The teachers who you praised or criticized, loved or hated, will never give you another homework assignment ever again, will never deal with you on a daily basis ever again. And so as we head off to various corners of the world, I don't know about you, but this strong sense of security and stability that I once had is quickly evaporated. Now, for those who don't know me, I'm a political fanatic, and change in our country with regard to politics and, and parties become massive with the excessive polarization and the off-the-cuff statements we witness on a daily basis. Oddly enough, somehow, some way, I got swept into that. Last year, our governor, Governor LePage, told me that he, he wanted to shoot my father, or I'll officially paraphrase that and say, uh, Erase him from the panel. So when I said thank you for being here, Dad, I didn't mean just thanks for showing up. I meant thanks for ducking. <laughs> but politically in our country, as well, the landscape is changing. Whether you support the transformations brought on by presumptive Republican nominee Donald Trump or like the progressive reforms called for by Barack Obama in 2008, change is everywhere. However, what's interesting is that the people who we look to as leaders speak much of change, but they never demonstrate how to act when things actually do change. Or more importantly, model the process of maturing. When I worked in the U.S. Senate last summer, the hallways whispered many stories about our country's most respected leaders. Stories that I, I wouldn't repeat in the presence of so many kind and gentle souls here today. But I can share some of the interactions that I had personally with these representatives one-on-one. -on -one. Arizona Senator John McCain joked if Maine had any electricity. Minnesota Senator Al Franken told me they got out of his way because he was a senator. And Vermont Senator and presidential candidate Bernie Sanders curmudgeonly questioned my door opening skills when I didn't open one fast enough for him. Yes, it's true, he does grumpy. But as you can see, none of these leaders embody the spirit of change in the way they acted in the real world. Instead, for a lesson on how to confront life's twists and turns, I turned to the most inspiring person I believe in the Senate, a man named Tiny. He was a physically big man who served as the Senate facilities manager. Now, Tiny, for full disclosure, is loved by everyone. Everyone's on a first name basis with him as senators, and he is vice versa. And he once told me, he said, Nick, with all this change going on around here, the capital and the country, the only way to stay earnest and true to yourself is to treat every person you meet with respect, to care about what they have to say, to work together and to be the best you can be. It's fine. The greatest message that I learned about change in Washington, D.C. wasn't from some high-profile policy wonk or some senator. It was from Tiny. It was from Tiny. Big words for a man with a small name. But such an underestimated presence is mirrored in our own class. Since our first year at Bangor High School, we were merely peasants 
in a vast kingdom, we strive for great results and character and action. And I am proud to report that four years later, this class together has garnered the greatest list of accolades possible and are leaving this palace of Bangor High School a better place than it was. And because of our past achievement, I believe we can successfully and expertly help this country and enact positive change. But in a few short hours, however, this class will disperse into a group of individuals going off in different directions. And as your president, the thing I want to stress is that in a sea of education and change, education is your anchor. In the movie Dead Poets Society, teacher, a steam teacher, Mr. Keating, said, Carpe diem which is Latin for seize the day. And today I say to you, carpe educatio, which is Latin for seize your education. And fortunately for us, our school and staff have instilled in us the sense of analyzing and thinking, rationalizing and applying, understanding and collaborating. And these skills are ingrained in us and will serve us well when we look to settle into the next phases of our adult lives. Because I can guarantee you that no one, no employer in the real world will care if you can recite the opening lines of the Odyssey, we'll care if you can reflect with perfect clarity the events preceding the Spanish-American War. What will matter, and what they will be impressed with, is when you discuss their importance and their significance, or how they inspire you and us to lead and succeed. But in this real world, the only person accountable for you is you. Ever thought about that? You must fight to be unique and imaginative and inspiring. You must force yourself to be creative and you have to want yourself to be innovative and interesting because no one else will make decisions for you. No one else will be there every step of the way and will make the final call except you, you and you alone. But as our lives transform, it sparks the question, how does this class, the Bangor High School class of 2016, remain strong and intact? How do we stay as a cohesive unit like we are today and as a collective entity in both spirit and in mind? Well, I have an idea. For four years, this student body here assembled has embraced great memories, developed innovative ideas, conceived concepts, dreamt dreams, embraced emotions, and formed a fundamental understanding of who we are and why we are here. And if we adhere to those principles, and if we remember the lessons we have learned from each other and from our school, and if we vividly and fondly reminisce, about the memories we share and the people we care for, regardless of how much the world changes, regardless of how much our lives change, and regardless of how far apart we may be from each other, we will always be connected. I know you all do fantastic things. I only hope you do these things to the best of your ability, and to help others, and to remain content and happy at the end of each and every day. Thank you.